This is Joseph Campanella. Bishop Sheen's spoken and written words are a treasure for God's people of all religions. The diversity of his words reflect his certainty that it is not a unity of religion that we plead for, but a unity of religious people. One of the most important things when you're sailing is wind direction. You always have to know where the wind is coming from. In the last couple of installments on this playlist, we discussed that before the Second Vatican Council, Archbishop Fulton Sheen was an eloquent defender of the Catholic faith. But when the winds changed with the Second Vatican Council, he changed direction along with the rest of the Novus Ordo Church. I originally posted my video, Archbishop Fulton Sheen on St. Bridget Church, way back in December of 2019. Recently, almost four years later, I received an email telling me that after a manual review by the owner of the old Life is Worth Living videos, my video was taken down because the clip was copyrighted. I did a fair amount of research on the original video and I thought it was pretty good, so I'm going to repost the video without showing Bishop Sheen's Life is Worth Living television show clip. I'll just read the text of what he said. Unfortunately, I won't be as dramatic as Bishop Sheen, and I'll leave out the many dramatic pauses and other flourishes, but I have to work with what I have. On January 1st, 1968, Hollywood released a movie called In the Shoes of the Fisherman. It starred Anthony Quinn as the Pope. It was a big movie and it was Catholic focused, so it seems almost certain that Bishop Sheen saw it. And here's a clip from the climax of the movie. I am the custodian of the wealth of the church. I pledge it now. All our money, all our holdings in land, buildings, and great works of art for the relief of our hungry brothers. And if to honor this pledge, the church must strip itself down to poverty, so be it. I will not alter this pledge. I will not reduce it. And now, I beg the great of the world and the small of the world to share out of their abundance with those who have nothing. So Bishop Sheen saw this movie and saw that Pope Anthony Quinn gave away the church's property and everybody thought it was a wonderful gesture and everyone in the movie loved him for it. So about one and a half months later after watching the movie, Bishop Sheen was inspired to do the exact same thing. What's left in the inner city? Well, churches that were once built by Italians, once by Germans and by Poles and by the Irish. They've all moved out. What is left? Steeples, high steeples, vertical fingers pointing up to heaven. Believe me, those fingers have got to point horizontally out to these people. And I, as a bishop, have struggled with it. What should one do? Just simply hold on, hold on to this property amidst the people who have nothing? It kept me awake at night. So, I decided to do something. I decided that instead of just being a receiving church, We've got to be a giving church. Why not, therefore, get rid of all that was on the property, the rectory, the school, the convent, everything, and put up housing for the poor? I think the Lord would bless us. So, what did I do? I wrote to Mr. Robert G. Weaver, the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, in which I said, I want to give the government a church. 
And let us be clear, I'm not giving this away because I do not need it, nor because I cannot find some way of using it for teaching and caring for the poor. I'm not giving it away because it's a burden on our budget, but because it's a burden on our conscience. I'm under the gospel imperative to be a giving church and not a receiving church. So I'm going to crash the giving barrier, just as technology has crashed the sound barrier. And then he reads from his letter, Would you therefore be willing to accept the full and unqualified gift of one of the parishes in the inner city? We will pass the church and all the property attached to it to you or to anyone you may designate, so as long as on that property is built, in the shortest possible time, housing for the poor. The problem is that In the Shoes of the Fisherman was just a movie. It was just fiction. And what Pope Anthony Quinn did in the movie was a bad idea. The AKA Catholic website answers why the church doesn't give away its property to feed the poor. The Catholic Church is the caretaker of many treasures of art and architecture created all over the world by Christians to praise God. These goods are worth money, but they are priceless. And by being in the hands of the church who created them, they are available to all. Selling all the goods of the church, all of which are in the hands of small congregations of Christians and are the patrimony of our ancestors, would bring in some money, of course, but it would take even more money to replace the buildings and they would have no art to inspire. The church does not have much money and most of what she collects she gives to the poor. She is the largest provider of social services. Henry VIII and Elizabeth had the same idea, so they closed all the monasteries and seized their treasures. As a result, the entire social welfare and hospital system of England was shut down. The monasteries were the entire social welfare and hospital system of England. The result was a horrible misery. In addition, the treasures that were stolen from the church were handed out to cronies and became the basis for an unjust class system. Usually when people wanted to spoil the church to help the poor, when the church does most of the helping of the poor to begin with, they just want to despoil the church. As for the Vatican Library, it is open. Many items are ancient and delicate, most are in foreign languages, and some, I believe, still need cataloging. To sum it up, it is right to say that the Church is the custodian of much great art created for the service and praise of God. If this art were in the hands of private individuals, it would not be available for all, or it would be destroyed. If it was in the hands of states, it would be seen intermittently and subject to political turmoil and war. It is not liquid wealth, and even if the church wanted to sell it to the poor, there would be no one who could buy it. So what Bishop Sheen did was even more problematic than what Pope Anthony Quinn did. That's because, in a sense, churches belong to everyone. When poor people who have nothing go to a church, they have every bit of the right to enjoy its beauty and majesty as the most wealthy parishioners. But Bishop Sheen chose to give away a church to the government as if the government was some sort of charitable institution. The church that he chose to give away was St. Bridget's Church, which was a church in a poor neighborhood. It was in a predominantly Puerto Rican and African-American neighborhood. In a letter that Bishop Sheen wrote to the government, he said, take it down, why should it be taking up the ground? However, Bishop Sheen acknowledged that it was not easy for the pastor, assistant clergy, and devoted people to give up what was already so serviceable and beloved. In Washington, HUD Secretary Robert C. Weaver accepted the gift as being excellent, feasible, and most desirable. However, Bishop Sheen didn't consult with anyone before deciding to give away St. Bridget's. The church's priests and parishioners only learned about it by reading the newspaper. And they weren't just surprised, they were angry. Students cried and adults talked of a protest march. A priest from St. Bridget's said that he would like to get Bishop Sheen down there to explain it to the people. A meeting of the parish was contemplated for the following week, and he estimated that there were about 100 to 200 phone calls the previous day, and several more people came into the church in person. So the following day, the Democrat and Chronicle followed up on the story and reported that a group of priests from the area drafted a statement questioning the way Bishop Sheen gave away St. Bridget's. The issue, said one, was the whole business of decisions being made without any consultation. The Democrat and Chronicle that day published a letter to the editor. A person wrote, As a non-Catholic, I was most impressed by Bishop Sheen's Lenten gift of St. Bridget's Church to provide housing for the inner city. What puzzles me, though, is that he chose to offer up a church of the poor who have given so much already. 
The next day, the Democrat and Chronicle reported that many were concerned about the treatment of the pastor of St. Bridget's, who had dedicated many years of work there. One priest said, It was callous, unthinking, and unjust, and indicated a lack of appreciation for what the pastor had done. The St. Bridget's episode brought to light a discontent with the bishop's policies that apparently had been smoldering among the local clergy since Bishop Sheen arrived. There had been dissatisfaction right from the start. The priests were considering going over Bishop Sheen's head if he didn't take some action to ease St. Bridget's situation. Then on March 3rd, the Democrat Chronicle featured a poll, and it asked, The Most Reverend Fulton J. Sheen, Bishop of Rochester, has given St. Bridget's Church to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the use of a site for housing for the poor. Do you approve or disapprove? One week later, the paper published the results of the poll. 344 persons, including 277 Catholics, said that they disapproved of Bishop Sheen's action, and only 22 supported it. And of that 22, six said that while they approved of his intentions, they objected to his methods. The paper printed some comments. One said, I don't like the way it was given away without consulting the pastor or parish members. My parish could be next. He has no moral right to give anything away except his own personal wealth. This was just another of his show-off gestures. He should remember the sin of pride. His publicity stunt backfired this time. He should have been assigned to Hollywood, not Rochester. As a teacher in the neighborhood, I know how much the loss of their church would have meant to the people who have so little. One Roman Catholic said he disapproved of his bishop's action. His reason was simple and only five words long, because this is my church. And probably the most insightful comment was, taking from the poor to give to the poor. What sense does that make? On March 4th, the Democrat and Chronicle reported on its front page that St. Bridget's Church was spared. Joy reigned. Father Francis Vogt, the pastor of St. Bridget's, told his parishioners in sermons all morning that Bishop Sheen had reconsidered and the people were ecstatic. Father Vogt said the reaction of his parishioners was uniformly joyous. They were so happy they were kissing each other and jumping up and down after Masses. They had gone to church thinking that their spiritual home would be turned into federal housing, and they came out knowing that it wouldn't happen after all. And another said, Everybody was really excited. The church belongs to the people. It's the only place they have to pray. I was really happy. It was great, one parishioner said, describing the reaction of the parish. You could see all the smiling faces. Everybody was all warm and nice. On March 5th, the Democrat and Chronicle reported, as has been true since the gift of the parish was announced, Bishop Sheen was not available for any statement on the matter. And it would be nice to end the video right here with a happy ending. But there aren't any happy endings with the Novus Ordo Church. Everything becomes twisted and ugly. Until the Second Vatican Council is abrogated, there won't be any happy endings. So let's just talk about what happened to St. Bridget's. St. Bridget ended up with the same fate as hundreds of other churches throughout the United States. People increasingly stopped going to Mass with the establishment of the Novus Ordo Mass. Souls weren't nourished by the caricature of a real Mass, so the people just slowly drifted away. The poor state of St. Bridget's Church can be seen in the Democrat and Chronicle photograph prior to the final Mass of the building. A divider was erected because the back of the church was completely unusable and the parish could not afford repairs. Here's a picture of St. Bridget's School nowadays. It's closed up and it's all boarded up. Here's a picture of the exterior of St. Bridget's Church. A local non-denominational community purchased St. Bridget's and it's transforming it into a religious performing arts center. Here's a more recent photo of the interior of St. Bridget's. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. I'll be back again soon with another one. But in the meantime, please pray for the church and pray for the restoration of all things that are good and profitable.